Good day everyone, this is Stephen A. De Las Reyes and in this video we will talk about the intellectual revolutions and society. So at the end of the module, students should be able to identify the intellectual revolutions that shape society across time, explain how intellectual revolutions transform the views of society about dominant scientific thought, and research on the other intellectual revolutions that advance modern science and scientific thinking. So in the study of history of science and technology, another important area of interest involves the various intellectual revolutions across time. In this area, interest lies in how intellectual revolutions emerge as a result of the interaction of science and technology and of society. It also covers how intellectual revolutions altered the way modern science was understood and approached. So for this discussion, uh, intellectual revolution should not be confused with the Greek pre-Socratic speculations about the behavior of the universe. So what is a uh, Greek pre-Socratic? Uh, the pre-Socratics were 6th and 5th century BC Greek thinkers who introduced a new way of inquiring into the world and the place of human beings in it. So they were recognized in antiquity as the first philosophers and scientists of the Western tradition. Okay. So in science and technology, intellectual revolutions refer to the series of events that led to the emergence of modern science and the progress of scientific thinking across critical period in history. So although there are many intellectual revolutions, we will just focus on three of the most important ones that altered the way humans view science and impacts on society. These are the Copernican Revolution, the Armenian Revolution, and the Freudian Revolution. Okay. In the words of the French astronomer, mathematician, and Freemason Jean Silve Vain Bailey, 1976, in Cohen, these scientific revolutions involve a two stage process of sweeping away the old and establishing the new. So there are uh, there is a transformation. Okay. So, until like what revolutions in understanding of it, it is worth noting that these revolutions are in themselves paradigm shifts. So, when we say paradigm uh, shifts, it is a fundamental change in approach or underlying assumptions. So, these shifts resulted from a renewed and enlightened understanding of how the universe behaves and functions. They challenge long held views about the nature of the universe. Thus, these revolutions were often met with huge uh, resist resistance and controversy. So, let's move on to Copernican Revolution. It refers to the 16th century paradigm shift named after the Polish mathematician and astronomer Nikola Copernicus. So, so Nikola Copernicus reformulated the heliocentric model of the universe. Because at that time, uh, people believed that the uh, Earth is the center of the solar system. Uh, it is based on the uh, geocentric model of Ptolemy. So, this is how people view of the universe. So, the left side is the Ptolemy and then the right side is the Copernicus. So, may kita dito na yung Earth, ito daw yung center. And then the moon and other planets is uh, are revolving around the Earth, while by Copernicus, naman, which is the heliocentric model that we call, ah, the Sun is the uh, center of the universe, and the Mercury, Venus, and other planets, including the Earth and Moon, ah, uh, are revolving around the Sun. So this is the uh, pre-post of Copern uh, Cop Nikola Copernicus during his time. Okay. So, he formalized his model in the publication of his treatise, The Revolutionibus or Bium Coelestium, or meaning the revolution of celestial spheres in 1543. In his model, Copernicus uh, repositioned the Earth from the center of the solar system and introduced the idea that the Earth rotates on its own axis. Okay. So, uh, this model illustrated the Earth along with other heavenly bodies to be rotating around the Sun. So, at first, uh, no, in introduce ito ni 
Copernicus, napaka-unsettling na ito kasi, ayun uh, nga, kasi iba yung view niya sa nakasanayang view ng tao noon na yung Earth nga yung center instead of Sun. And, uh, in fact, the heliocentric model was met with huge resistance primarily from the Church accusing Copernicus of heresy. So, hindi nila maisip kung bakit hindi yung Earth yung center ng universe. And because of this, Nicola Copernicus uh, faced persecution from the Church. Okay, not less, despite problems with the model and the persecution of the Church, the heliocentric model was soon accepted by the other scientists at the time, most profoundly by Galileo Galilei. So, the contribution of the Copernican Revolution is far-reaching. It served as a catalyst to sway scientific thinking away from age-long views about the position of the Earth relative to an enlightened understanding of the universe. So, this marked the beginning of modern astronomy. Next is the Darwinian Revolution. The English naturalist, geologist, and biologist Charles Darwin is credited for steering another important intellectual revolution in the mid-19th century. So, his treatise on the science of evolution and the origin of species was published in 1859 and began a revolution that brought humanity to a new era of intellectual discovery. So, the Darwinian revolution benefited from earlier intellectual revolutions, especially those in the 16th and 17th century, such that it was guided by confidence in human reason's ability to explain phenomena in the universe. So, for his part, uh, Darwin gathered evidence pointing to what is known as natural selection, an evolutionary process by which organisms, including, including humans, inherit, develop, and adopt traits that favor survival and reproduction. So dito, according kay Darwin, ang naniniwala siya sa evolution, kung saan yung mga organisms ay nag adapt sa environment for them able to survive. So it is the survival of the fetus na. So kapag hindi ka nakapag-adapt sa environment, sa paligid mo, uh, talo ka. So parang ganun siya. Like for the example sa picture. So, these are the big of ancestral species of finches found in the Galapagos has evolved to be able to survive in acquiring different food sources. So, katulad kay uh, Nicholas uh, Copernicus, nagkaroon din ng controversies and nagmet din ito ng resistance itong theory of evolution ni Darwin. Because the critics accused the theory of uh, being either short in accounting for the broad and complex evolutionary process or dismissive of the idea that the functional design of organisms was a manifestation of an omni omniscient God. So the Darwinian revolution can be likened to the Copernican revolution in its demonstration of the power of the laws of nature in explaining biological phenomena of survival and reproduction. So the place of a uh, Darwinian revolution uh, cannot be underestimated. Through the Darwinian revolution, the development of organisms and the origin of unique forms of life and humanity could be rationalized by a local system or an orderly process of change underpinned by laws of nature. Okay. So next is the Freudian revolution. So Austrian neurologist uh, Sigmund Freud is credited for steering a 20th century intellectual revolution named after him, the Freudian revolution. And psychoanalysis as a school of thought in psychology is at the center of this revolution. So uh, dito naman sa time na to, uh, pinopose niya yung psychoanalysis. Yung uh, psychoanalysis or yung psychoanalytic uh, theory ni Sigmund Freud, uh, it explains human behavior in terms of the interaction of various components of personality. And it has uh, three functions. Yun yung uh, id, uh, superego, and ano ba yung isa? Ego, yun. So yung id, it is the unconscious source of uh, primitive sexual dependency and aggressive impulse and then the super ego which is the subconsciously energized societal mores setting standards to live by and the ego 
uh, represents a sense of self and mediates between realities of the moment and psychic needs and conflicts. So, nagkaroon din ng controversy dito sa theory ni uh, Sigmund Freud dahil na-emphasize niya ito yung uh, existence of the unconscious where feelings, thoughts, urges, emotions, and memories are contained outside of one's conscious mind. So, psycho uh, analytic concepts of uh, psychosexual development is uh, libido and ego were met with both support and resistance from many scholars. And for develop a psychoanalysis, a scientific method of understanding inner and unconscious conflicts embedded within one's personality, springing from free associations, dreams, and fantasies of the individual. And dito, as in a Justin Freud, the mga, uh, mga tao ay um, pleasure-seeking individuals. So, psychoanalytic concepts of psychosexual development, libido and ego were met with both support and resistance from many scholars. And isa pa sa mga theory niya is yung Oedipus and Electra complexes didn't seem to be supported by empirical data. Yung Oedipus and Electra, uh, yun yung uh, desire, sexual desire towards the parent of the opposite sex and exclusion of the parent of the same sex. So also, it appeared to critics that uh, psychoanalysis was more of an ideological is instance than a uh, scientific one life. So the scientific hypothesis he formulated about this formed the initial version of psychoanalysis. So you, his ideas uh, and theories, hypotheses, uh, they truly revolutionized how people thought about mind and consciousness and had large impacts for outside the area of mental health and very few of these ideas have been proven to be true by subsequent research and psychodynamic therapies that treat a myriad of psychological disorders still remain largely informed by Freud's work on psychoanalysis and Freud's psychoanalysis is widely credited for dominating psychotherapeutic practice in the early 20th century so those are the uh, important events that happened in the uh, three intellectual revolutions. Thank you for listening.